What's going on? Why is Dave Chappelle going to Africa? Why does Mariah Carey make a $100 million deal and take clothes off on TRL? It, a weak person cannot get to sit here and talk to you. Ain't no weak people talking to you. So what is happening in Hollywood? Nobody knows. The worst thing to call somebody is crazy, is dismissive. I don't understand this person, so they're crazy. That's bullshit. These people are not crazy, they're strong people. Maybe the environment is a little sick. I don't know how this whole Dave Chappelle thing is gonna end, but I feel like I'm gonna be some kind of parable by either what you're supposed to do or what you're not supposed to. So I'm going to be something. I'm either going to be a legend or just that tragic fucking story, but I'm going full throttle. I'm going all the way. <laughs> I want to, I'm, I'm eager to find out how this is, will resolve itself. Oh, I'm dropping dimes tonight. <laughs> Everybody wants to know, why'd you walk away from $50 million? Well, I wasn't walking away from the money. Yeah. I was walking away from the circumstances uh -huh. that, that were coming with the newfound plateau. Yeah. It takes a while when you punch through uh, to adjust to the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It was completely outside of my frame of reference. I've been in show business since I was 14, and uh, I've heard the stories mm -hmm. of what happens, and I've seen these kinds of things play out in front of me. Okay. When, I saw when you say you heard the stories, what do you mean? What stories? I mean, you see before, look, Mariah Carey made a $100 million deal, and three months later, she's all of a sudden mysteriously crazy. Or Martin Lawrence punches through, and he's waving a gun on the street, screaming, they're trying to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we hear those stories. And it always happens around the time of their career where it seems as though they're crossing over the next plateau. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like an economic threshold you cross, man. You know, they were, they were throwing out numbers like, Fifty million dollars. You, you put that in the paper next to your name, then that guy's gonna have some serious problems in his personal life. There's no question. You know, I like to live a more open life. I don't like to have to protect myself from people. I don't want my life to become about enforcing boundaries. You know, but that's what happens when you become successful. Your, your humanity diminishes, and you become something else to people. You ever see the cartoons where they're hungry and he looks over at his buddy and his buddy looks like a chicken dinner? <laughs> That's kind of like, it's kind of like that. Uh, I feel like in a, in a lot of instances, I was deliberately being put through stress because, uh, you know, when you're a guy that generates money, yeah. people have a vested interest in controlling. Yeah. Were they trying to control you? Because, you know, I read the Time Magazine article and they were quoted as saying, you had extreme creative control and that you really ran your own show. Yeah, okay, well, Oprah, I did two very successful seasons before that. So yeah. why all of a sudden on the third time am I in Africa by myself? Like, yeah. what, what's happening? Because, you know, everyone asked me, why did you walk away from that show? Even Oprah couldn't get an answer out of me. I was dodging your questions like a Nathan. Sorry, Oprah. I can't answer that shit. I'm sorry, Oprah. I'm not going to... You, you know what it is? It's the motherfucking game. I figured it out. This whole shit is run off the game. Nobody knows what the game is, but I figured it out. I know the whole shit. You see, you gotta look for the clues when you're dealing with Hollywood. You gotta ask yourself the right questions, because Hollywood thinks they're slick. I'm serious, man. Ask yourself this. How many people live in India? 1.2 billion. So think about it. Do you think Hollywood could have found an Indian to play Gandhi? <laughs> I know this shit like that. Went out and I sat with these people in this room, and if you can imagine a large circle of people, and I was 12 o'clock, the black dude. Yeah, Dave, we really liked the show, but the, the pilot episode was about me getting booed off stage at the Apollo. They go, you know, but what are we going to do about it? I mean, there's not really any white people in it. So, well, it's about the Apollo. It's not really why. 
Well, you know, we were thinking about the girl on the show. We didn't think she was that funny, not that good looking. I think we should recast her, maybe. And they started using terms like universal appeal. Mm -hmm. Basically saying they want me to recast a girl with a white woman. I said, yeah, I don't think I can do this. And, and, and I quit. On the cover of Variety, Chappelle pulls the race card. The race card. And I get calls from Newsweek, 60 Minutes. Everybody, we want your story. <laughs> Man, I'm scared to death. I'm like Rosa Parks or something. Like, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> I was just venting a little bit. I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like, when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down. Like, why are all these brothers going to wear a dress? This happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. <laughs> they come in. So the writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> and he put this dress on. And, it, huh? What? The prostitute? No, nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with that. The, that should have been in a discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We're supposed to shoot. Every, every minute you waste costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. He said, I'm, nah, I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? Ba, 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 ba. You know, we're going like this. And then finally he's like, ah, and he, he leaves. And then, like, the director comes, Dave, it really would be great if you wear the dress. What is wrong? What is this, uh, Brokeback Mountain in here? So, <laughs> so then... <laughs> and wear the, wear the dress. I don't want to wear the dress. I don't want to wear this dress. You know what I mean? This is, uh... Oh, gosh, this guy's so difficult. They leave. Now the producers comes, come on, David, would be so great. I mean, and then I started thinking about it. All the comics that I've seen, man, you know, strong brothers, why, why are they putting us in these dresses? But the minute it was clear, I was adamant, I'm not wearing a dress. I'm not wearing the dress. All right, fine. Think of something else. Guy comes back 10 minutes later, the whole new scene, how, damn, how did you write the scene so fast? <laughs> You know, it's like, so, you got to take a stink. You know, who, really, like, who the f*** do these people think they are? And they don't know what happened. You know, I, I, have, I have not spoken about what, what would make a person walk off the set of a successful show and go to Africa. But again, people don't understand it, so they call me crazy, and I don't like that. And then I got to make some real choices, man. Is that what I want for myself? Did I get too big? Because I like people. I like entertaining. And the higher up I go, for some reason, the less happy I am. You know, is it going to get to the point where I'm doing a strip tease on TRL or waving a gun on the street, <laughs> saying they're trying to kill me? No, I'm not going to let it get to that point. I'm going to go to Africa. I'm going to find a way to. I'm going to find a way to be myself, man. I gotta. I got to, you know, I'm an artist, man. I'm, you know, I don't, I don't need a sneaker deal. I, I mean, I'd like one, if they, but, <laughs> but that's kind of not, that's not the need that makes you guys go to school. You're not in this school right now because you want a sneaker deal. It'd be nice, but that's, that's not why you're here, right? You're not here because, you, you know, you'd like to be in the movies, but it, to, to act or to entertain or to, it's a need that maybe a lot of your friends don't even understand. But you got that need, and you have your dreams. And there's only six studios, man. There's only six agencies, man. This is a small, controlled thing. And I don't like having to beg for the spotlight, man. It, the, you know, the machine is good for us, and we good for the machine. And it should be, should be fair, man.
should be fair. But this is show business. I can climb that socioeconomic ladder just off the merit of my skills. I can talk that shit. It's God given gift. So, you know, yeah, I speak in street vernacular because when I'm talking to an audience of people, I feel comfortable. It's like an extension. Really, crowds are like my friends. I, they're the most, it's the most consistent part of my life since I was 14. Yeah. But in certain situations, you know, I, I got to. I understand. I got to use that job interview. Well, <laughs> I don't Wait. like that deal. But that's the game. That's the game. The media would be trying to trick everyone, distract you with bullshit. Look at this. Right now, there's a war in Iraq. There's a war in Afghanistan still. There's a genocide in Sudan. And everybody in the country is looking for the Miss White Girl in Aruba. And I feel bad for her family, but she's not the top story. There are, right now as we speak, hundreds if not thousands of missing black children that don't even get any media mention. As a matter of fact, you are looking at the first nigga that America has ever looked for. I'm the first missing black person America has ever looked for. Y'all want to know what the game is? You want me to spell it out for you? Do you, you want to know why I went to Africa? Yes! All right, the fun thing is, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. But I can give you a hint. This hint, I'll tell you where to look. Go to the local library. I'm serious, you get a book. It's written by a great American. This American's name was Iceberg Slim. <laughs> He wrote a book called Pimp <laughs> about his rise and fall in the game of pimping. Now there's two ways you can read this shit. If you just skim the top, it seems like you're reading about some free shit. But if you read a little deeper, it is the capitalist manifesto. We put the blueprint out for all the people to see, but you gotta get past pimping. Because pimping is ugly. <laughs> but it is the game. <laughs> but you know what it is that me and Chris know that all the famous people know that y'all have no idea about? Is that your country is run by idiots. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna say that. <laughs> Bush is actually not an idiot because a nigga is the president. <laughs> and he didn't get all the votes, so he had to do something. <laughs> a dog can't do no shit like that. How <laughs> can I steal a country? <laughs> no, I was going to say it's run by a dirty game. Now, I love my country, but I don't love the game that got the country locked right in. And it's a dirty motherfucking game. And you're like, well, how come I've never heard of it before? Cause that's the first rule of the game, baby. <laughs> it's like Fight Club. What's the first rule of Fight Club? Don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> Can't say shit. I'm going through some real tough, real times. Some nitty gritty stuff. When we go through things like this, it helps you put it on perspective. I'm famous today. People like me today. They might not like me tomorrow. You never know. You can't count on it. The world can't tell you who you are. You just got to figure out who you are and be that, for better or for worse. I don't judge people or not like people for thinking. I, you know, people that I love tell me I go too far sometimes. Maybe I went too far, but I did it. <laughs> You know, and plus, the only way you know where the line is is to cross it. And I think that what is life if nobody's crossing the line? You just want to try to be on the right side of history. And sometimes what's going on in the immediate present 
is not as important as the long term. The truth is permanent and then everything else will fall by the wayside.